Hey guys, this is Cast for Closers, your podcast for dominating inside sales and hitting your quota. We're very happy today. We're now having a very, very special guest. This is not just a usual uh, episode. I'm talking in English because we are bringing him who holds the record for guest appearances here. Matt Doyle, ladies and gentlemen. Matt is now... CEO of Triple Session. He's a book writer, so he's going to talk about both projects here. It's been a while since we have we had him on the show. Matt, we are very, very happy to have you here. It's an honor. It's a privilege. Uh, welcome again. Yeah, happy to be back, man. You said special guest. It's not so special anymore. I think I'm <laughs> overstaying my welcome a bit. Yeah. At the fourth time, it's just, it's just a home guest, you know? It feels home. Yeah, right. <laughs> Matt, feel free to introduce us. What triple session means, and and how is the book? I, I heard there's a there's a book coming. Yeah, so that's a lot to unpack. Let's um let's let's look at both, but let's kind of look at it in context a little bit. Yes, and please go back in time a little bit, if I could, Diego. Uh, if we look at just the contemporary history of sales, going back about 15 years. 15 years ago was really where SaaS especially started to pick up, right? Uh, we started to see a lot yes. of those companies that were following in the path of Salesforce, which started now 24 years ago, um, really starting to catch on with SaaS. HubSpot came out of that class where I used to work yes. and a whole generation of, of businesses. If we look at sales in those businesses, you could scale a business all the way to IPO with a single channel. You could, you could be a one-trick pony. So Salesforce famously did that with Outbound. Aaron Ross wrote the book on predictable revenue and that yes. process. Inbound obviously was the go-to for HubSpot. I was there on the day of the IPO, and it was amazing to see this giant successful business that really had one channel of acquisition. You know, oh. I think 90 plus percent of clients came through inbound. We saw that being doubled down and tripled down in a lot of businesses where they would just really focus on one channel. Things started to change in two, two, time, in two areas specifically. One, when SaaS started to mature in really the mid-teens, around 2014, 15, 16, things got really competitive. Businesses started to scale. They need to branch out and look for other channels of acquisition. So they really became multi-channel. Yes. And then once again, they, they kind of rode that. They started to put the SDR revolution in place. That's where we started to see SDR really take off as a career path. Huge teams of BDRs, SDRs, whatever acronym you want to use or initials. Yes. Um, that really caught fire. And that really took off until 2019. 2020, COVID changed the world. Everybody goes home. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. Some industries obviously got rocked by COVID. SaaS businesses really benefited. And a lot of capital flowed into those businesses and also to those sales teams. Yes. And they just kept going faster and growing and getting bigger without really looking at optimization. And that, that party ended last year. So right around Q2 of 2022, things started to dry up. And by Q4 last year, was gone. The capital yes. markets had shut the doors. Things got really tight. And now we're in 2023. And what we're facing now is a new chapter of optimization. Now, those of us who have worked in Brazil, we always lived under this model because capital was always scarce, right? Yes. Yes. So we're, <laughs> and we're always primed for this in one respect. It was a great time to start a business in Brazil years ago because you had to do it at what I used to call high altitude. There just wasn't a lot of oxygen. So you had to be in really good shape. Now that model is global. Capital has dried up. Everybody is focusing on profitability. Everybody's focusing on optimization. We used to look really closely at revenue per lead as a key metric. Now we're looking at revenue per person. And that's fundamentally different. Revenue per lead, you can just throw bodies at that. Just have one salesperson for every lead that's really good. You're going to maximize. You're going to have a huge team and it's not going to be efficient. But that's how you maximize revenue per lead. Revenue per headcount is different. And that means optimization. And that means you have to really maximize productivity across the entire value stream of the sales organization where SDRs and BDRs 
really understand sales, not just your product, your service. They really understand it fundamentally. AEs and AMs, they need to be multi-channel now. It can't be one trick ponies like in the old days. That doesn't work. They can't rest and sit back and wait for the next EDR or inbound lead to get booked because everything has gotten so competitive and everybody in finance is watching the bottom lines in sales so much, everyone needs to optimize. So before when you had that demo that got canceled, the meeting got rescheduled, yeah, I could go grab a coffee. We can take a nap, whatever. <laughs> now you get a meeting that pushes, you have to go work outbound. You have to go prospect, start calling, start working your base. That's new for a lot of sales organizations, and it's really changing the model. And why it's changing the model is that we're really relying on sales teams to do more and more now than ever before. Capital's dried up. It's gotten really competitive for channels of acquisition, and we need optimization. So that puts a lot of pressure on sales teams, but it's a lot of opportunity as well. That was really the underpinning of both Triple Session and the book Revenue Revolution, which just came out, is going to be released actually on October 10th, but it's already live on Amazon. That's the background. There's a no. lot of talking. I gotta take a sip of coffee here. What my <laughs> no, not not a problem at all. I was talking to a, a previous our previous guest just about that, Matt. How how the capital has dried up and how companies are focused on efficiency and and. He, he is a CFO, so the subject was how CFOs uh, choose and work uh, with projects or not, with priorities. And he was talking about that, and I was reflecting on that, and how small our problems were in 2019, and we didn't know. So the capital dried up, as you said, uh, the markets collapsed, and we had like to reinvent ourselves and focus on efficiency. So, uh, Matt... The headline sales training as a habit of this podcast is kind of a spoiler. You guys at Triple Session advocate sales as a daily, uh, sales training as a daily routine. So can you give us a sense of how we should approach sales training as a daily routine? Yeah. So now that we have the, the perspective of those macroeconomic trends that are impacting sales, and we know now that salespeople need to do more than ever. When we work in this kind of an environment and this kind of world, we're talking about a spectrum of skills that is so robust and so complex, it can be overwhelming for a lot of salespeople, not really to learn. You can train on a whole host of skills, but to stay sharp and to be skill ready and execute on a wide range of skills, that's really hard. And if we start looking at the origins of Triple Session anyway, what we really first did was look at the science and we looked for inspiration in other areas, other businesses, other industries that already cracked the code on this. And the one that was most obvious was professional sports. They, you know, the money ball revolution happened 20 years ago where they started using data and optimization and looking at tweaking performance and everything. And then that spun up guys like, Messi and Federer and Tom Brady and these, these outliers that they live their entire life around getting ready for the next game. And that's everything. That is constant skill building. It's staying in shape. It's eating. It's sleeping. It's everything. You become what I call a universal soldier where you can be dropped into any environment and you can get the job done on any front, no matter what the game is. We took inspiration from that and really studied the science behind what was going on in sports. And there are a few things that happen in sports to maximize that optimization. It's deliberate practice for this process of training on something that's a standard best practice, so whether it's hitting an overhand in tennis like Federer or throwing a ball like Brady or kicking a goal like, like Messi. There's a standard way that it's just a technique that you want to learn and maximize and optimize. And then combine that with another science called spaced learning. And spaced learning tells us if you really flood the chamber of your brain and try to learn something all at once, like a lot of companies do sales onboarding, you just don't retain that information. It doesn't yes. stick. 
So you pick it up, and if you ask somebody to pass the test that day, they're going to be fine. If you ask them a week later, half of the information has evaporated. A month later, it's almost gone. And the, the problem there is that a lot of sales professionals fool themselves into thinking that they're skill ready because they play the game every day, but they don't practice every day. And they're doing the job, and they're using the skill, but it becomes misaligned. And the ball goes in the wrong direction, or you throw an interception, or <laughs> you hit the ball into the net. Because you're a couple millimeters off, it doesn't get the results you need. So what do you need to do? You need to take those cues from the best in class in sports and work out like they work out, which is daily deliberate practice based on a spaced learning repetition model. So. Bruce Lee famously said, I'm not afraid of the guy that has practiced a thousand kicks once. I'm terrified of the guy that practiced one kick a thousand times. And that that's it. It's not sexy. It's not luxurious. It is what gets the job done. You have to go back to the truth and keep coming back to what's the right way. And sales have known this for a long time, right? That's what sales coaching is. When we coach somebody on a one-on-one, -on -one, we're typically not introducing new techniques. We're going back to the fundamentals. The fundamentals. Them again. What we need to do, though, is not just have the dentistry. Yeah, that one-on-one -on -one and that intensive training, that's like going to the dentist. That's really intensive, hands-on. What we need is more brushing teeth and this daily habit where you're going to get up, walk into the bathroom, brush your teeth, spend the time building that daily habit, keep the health and keep the strength there. It's the same thing that we're building with triple session. A triple session, it, it follows the science of space learning and deliberate practice. Standardized best practices, part one in a session, with number two, the second pillar, measurement. Everything has a customized quiz to make sure those principles were uploaded. And then three, instant feedback and measurement. What did you get right? What did you get wrong? Where do you rank with other people in your role? Where do you rank with other people on your team? How are you doing for skill knowledge before you get out on the field and practice it? Make sure you've aligned to this and you actually know 100% of what you need to do on that call, not just 70 or 80. When when you were talking about space learning, I I instantly recalled, recalled the person who might connect who might have connected us the great mark robert and i was yep. i was hearing uh, one one talk uh, physically on an event and and he he brought this analogy probably from tiger woods or golfing and and i remember clearly him saying that if you want to practice and evolve your golf swings you take one feedback and you hit 100 balls and then you take the second feedback and hit another 100 balls. Because if you take all the feedback and try to improve your golf swing at one single time, it just doesn't work. So it, it, it was clearly on my mind the same, the same methodology, but uh, stated in a different form, in a different way. Yeah, and the, the methodology of a triple session and the book that's just coming out is essentially the next chapter of that. When Mark was referencing that, in that piece of sales acceleration formula, he was really talking about coaching and how to coach somebody to improve yes. with one skill at a time. And that was something that a lot of businesses took, adopted, and they're doing great with. That's the dentistry that's needed. And I'm not advising anybody to stop going to the dentist. Keep your coaching. The yes. coaches and the sales managers are essential. They are the glue. They are really the engine that runs a sales organization. This next piece for optimization is coupling coaching with training. And those two things have commonly been decoupled at most sales organizations, where we're going to do this mass training. A lot of it is product focused. Sometimes we'll hire somebody from the outside to come in and do this broad based training. And then we'll coach you on individual skills one on one. What we're proposing and, and really what we're starting to implement with success at a number of organizations is you got to bring those two things together. Keep your one-on-one -on -one coaching because it's hands-on, it's customized. It really goes right into that one single skill that you need to optimize today and couple that with daily micro-training where 
Here's what we're going to work on. Here's the one skill. Here's the golf ball analogy. And then for the next seven days until we meet again, here is a menu of little 10 or 15 minute trainings that will help enrich your knowledge, bring back the fundamentals, give you different perspective from different voices on how to effectively execute on that. You're going to build that muscle, not just in this one-on-one, -on -one, but every morning you wake up, you'll get warm, you'll get loose, and you'll take a triple session. Matt, on that, now that we know the routine, would you guide us through a complete training session? What does it look like? And which skills first, the duration of the session, type of content consumed, et cetera? Yeah, so our average session now is seven minutes. So this is part of really the, the thesis, not only of the business, but of the book, where we have to look not just at what the business needs when we're looking at optimization. We have to look at the individual. We really have to build for the consumer. And what we're talking about is the SDR, the AE, the sales rep, the person who's using the training. How do we keep them involved? We took a lot of cues, not so much from SaaS, not so much from ed tech or learning and development tools. We looked at the most successful education business in the world, Duolingo. Duolingo pulls people in and engages them and teaches them a foreign language. And how they do that is by knowing that people aren't always excited to learn a foreign language every day. <laughs> I had a 500 day streak in Spanish at one point. I didn't wake up every day excited to learn Spanish. But some days I did. Some days I want to make sure I didn't lose my streak. Some days I want to compete on their little leaderboard and make sure that I beat the, the guy that I connected to on Facebook who's in the same leaderboard that I am. And I'm not going to let him one up because we have a side bet on it. Fun things like that that pull people in because the end result is still there. If you get in and you do your sessions, you're going to upload the information. You're going to fresh it. You're going to learn it. How you get there, whether it's excitement to learn, whether it's gamification, whether it's fear of missing out, whether it's competitiveness, we don't care. We're going to cover whatever it takes for you to get out of bed and go to the gym to work out. So a session is about seven minutes long. It zeroes in on a micro skill. So what are we talking about with micro skills? We, if you look at something like discovery calls, that is a huge, huge huge process, right? There are literally 50 different skills inside discovery if you want to maximize your results in discovery. So it's understanding communication style, it's setting a verbal agenda, it's asking great open questions, closed questions, investigative questions, it's being able to run a verbal summary of everything that you learn, understand pain, understand consequences, study the different sales methodologies that you might be using in your organization, and really study all of them. The best sales reps that I've ever worked with kind of blend methodologies as they go to meet individual customers. How do you talk about price? How do you qualify for objections? How, there's so much going on there. And those are just yes. the technical skills. We're not talking about time management or emotional intelligence, growth mindset, like all these other skills that impact performance. You need to have micro trainings that address all of them if you want to play at their top game. If you want to be messy, if you want to be Federer or Brady, this is what you need to do. And it's a daily grind. It's a daily practice. So average session is about seven minutes of, of video training with a quiz that now averages around seven questions. And instantly, once you submit the quiz, we spin up the score. It gets added to your personal player profile. So now there's no longer just a certification. We believe certifications are going to die because they're binary. <laughs> yes, And they just tell you, yes, I know this. No, I don't. They don't give you all that granularity and context and texture of, what specifically do you know in a skill level? When did you study it? How well did you do? You got to give me all of this context. So everyone that's using triple section has a player profile. It gives all the granular skills and there are hundreds of them and skill scores, not certifications. Fantastic, Matt. I want to look now at the bigger picture. Let us assume I'm a salesperson and I had a very productive session on discovery calls. So, so or yep. some micro uh, skill, micro skill related mm -hmm. to uh, discovery calls. So how can I salesperson know that 
I'm going forward on that skill and where's my benchmark? It's a great question. This is why coaching is still critical and yes. why we really need to pull these two elements together and have the coach and the training really work hand in hand. So if you're a junior salesperson, if you're looking to start a new role, that's where role tracks come in. That's where there's a logical order of operations. If you're a BDR and you're looking to start a job as a BDR, you need to understand, you know, what is the buying process, how to prospect, how to social sell, how to open up a conversation, how to run a cold call, things like that. If you're an experienced sales rep, this is where it's much more skill driven. And what we started to do when we developed the platform is put CRM and triple session stats side by side. Now we're baking this in. It's in our development right now. We're going to have the analytics all inside triple session with CRM integration. But you want to look at performance and practice. Yes. Where am I performing? Let's take a look at pillar one in sales stack CRM. Let's get into the CRM and look at that. Pillar number two, which really started to catch up 10 years ago, conversation intelligence. So what's going on when you're in these calls? We can listen to it. AI is getting a lot better now to make that job of dissecting calls a lot easier for Definitely. managers. Definitely. And now let's pair that with performance intelligence, practice intelligence. Let's look at triple session. Okay, where are you in terms of your skill strength on that? And how do you measurably move the needle to do that? And now the loop is closed. We have performance in CRM, conversation intelligence in Gong or Chorus or whatever you might be using me time. Um, and then come back into triple session for practice intelligence. Okay, now that I know what you're doing on the call, how it's performing, we can now write the recipe for what you need to get those muscles working on. You need to go into the gym, but we wanna work on one muscle group right now. And based on your performance, this is it. And then because it's a closed loop, we can then see, okay, how is this informing your calls post-training and how is that informing your results? Fantastic, Matt. Still on, big, on the big picture here, let's assume I'm a salesperson and I'm looking at my career. Am I a junior uh, salesperson or am I a senior salesperson? So mm -hmm. how do these sessions, uh, you guys, how do these sessions change from an entry level to a senior uh, perspective? Yeah, and this is a funny thing, and it's kind of a dirty secret in sales, right? Where the job of a senior salesperson in many ways is easier than the entry level, right? It's yes. kind of flipped on its head. It's harder and it's more difficult in another context. So let's let's break these two things down. Which is more difficult, cold calling or running discovery? I would argue cold calling. I mean, there is psychological warfare going on in a cold call, right? I mean, <laughs> right. that is stressful, high anxious. You've got to perform really fast and be ready to go with a stranger and make something out of nothing. Running a discovery, it's like, ah, I want you to talk about you and ask great questions. So in terms of the difficulty, it's hard to say one is more difficult than the other because when we look at the complexity of a discovery call, there are a lot more moving parts there. And the finesse has to be there. And the, the ability to put all of those pieces together, that's where the complexity comes in. So when we look at the arc of a sales career, it's not so much that any one skill is, gets harder over time. It's not like math where we could say, you know what? Multiplication is harder than addition. So we're going to teach you addition first and then multiplication later and then calculus after that. Where it becomes more challenging and more difficult for senior people and why they're so valuable is that there are so many skills that you have to have. The SDR, the BDR, they don't really know, need to know how to run discovery. In most sales organizations, they're not running in-depth discovery. They don't need to know how to present. They don't need to know how to run a demo. They don't need to know how to build an action plan and a mutual action plan with a client. They don't need to know how to negotiate. Salesperson needs all of that, an AE, a quota carrying salesperson, they need all of that. And now today, more than ever, they also need to go back to knowing how to do the BDR job too. Today, in the most high functioning sales organizations, Bridge Group had some study on this recently. Yes. Top flight AEs generate more than 30% of their revenue with self-source deals. That's where wow. we're going right now. That's, That's, again, the macroeconomics that focus on optimization and getting as much per person as possible. 
when that demo gets canceled, you got to go prospect. You got to know how to do it. Yes, Matt, I want to wrap this episode, uh, I think, with something so important. And it's the last question, but it's the first thing that came to my mind when I was uh, watching Triple Sessions business and how you guys approach. We had over the years sales leaders, sales trainers, sales enablement professionals, all, all, all that kind of good stuff um, and important, very important people. But now we're seeing a training session with seven minutes and a whole lot of independence and empowerment from the salesperson. So how do these other roles, sales leaders, sales trainers, how do they integrate and help the salesperson improve their game with something so so intense as a self-training program? Yeah, and this is a very good story, by the way. This growth, especially in sales enablement. If you looked at yes. LinkedIn 10 years ago, sales enablement really didn't exist. Nobody carried that title. If you looked at it about five years ago, you'd find a few thousand people. Just this morning, I plugged in sales enablement specialist and sales enablement manager just for people in LinkedIn that had those two titles. It's over 120,000 now. Wow. It's exploded. <laughs> and rightly so. This is a good thing because it's the business community waking up and knowing, yeah, sales is complex and we need to keep these muscles strong at all times. We need a training specialist that just focuses on helping salespeople stay sharp. And when we talk about that, this is exactly where we're now evolving into. It can't just be a top-down approach. We have to get salespeople engaged in their own skill development, bought into it, valuing it, and realizing this is career equity you're building. You're building yes. something that's not going to help you perform today, but it's going to carry you throughout the rest of your career. Triple Session was built for that purpose. It was to bring salespeople into the conversation and help tra trainers and managers and coaches and sales enablement people get a greater level of participation from their teams. So when I, I did a lot of research on learning and development tools that sales enablers were using today, over and over again, I heard the same story. We built all this content. We did all this stuff. We have all these trainings and nobody uses it. Like we have 10% adoption. Like that's, that. that's got to go. We got to get people to, to take hold of their own skill development. Fantastic, Matt. As always, it's a pleasure. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, Matt, feel free to, to let, uh, let your LinkedIn profile here talk about the book. Anyway, it's great to have you here again. Please take this time to, to enlighten the audience how to find you on LinkedIn. You're very active Thank now. You you're, you're... Yeah, I'll, do, I'll go with the shameless plugs all day long. Yeah, I will yeah shameless product. plugs, please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, LinkedIn, Matt Doyen, you know, probably, I'm probably going to be the only one you find out there. It's a pretty unique name, D-O-Y-O-N, Triple Session. You can check out triplesession.com and open a free account today. It takes about 45 seconds to get in there and start working out for free. Um, and the book, Revenue Revolution, you can type it in, find it on Amazon. It'll hit bookstores, at least in the U.S., Barnes & Nobles, and the rest on October 10th. Uh, all proceeds are going to go to two nonprofits I work with, one called build.org. Build helps Fantastic. with teaching entrepreneurship in under-resourced communities. And the other nonprofit is called fourblock.org. And they help veterans from active military prepare for civilian life and offboarding from the military and getting professional careers. So everything that we're getting from the book is going to go with split to those two organizations. They're both doing great work. Yeah, always a great person to talk with, Matt. Uh, thanks a lot for, for having the time to talk to us uh, and returning to this show. It's always special to have you here. You're such a part of the history of our uh, founders of me time of this show. You're, again, the record holder for guest appearances. We have now to maybe uh, you, you can charge us for the, the appearances here. I hope, this, I hope you enjoyed this. Had fun as always. Thanks a lot yeah. for being here. And, and for, for those of you who, uh, who have watched this since the beginning of this episode, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you liked it. If you're not subscribed yet, please consider this, consider doing this. And if this video helped you or helped you uh, find another way of sales training and incorporate this as your habit, please feel free to forward this to your colleagues, your coworkers, your friends, your family, maybe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot, guys. See you around.